Welcome to the show. You're listening to BIV Today, the daily business program from the newsroom at Business in Vancouver. I'm Haley Wooden, Executive Editor at BIV. I'm speaking today with the President and CEO of Arts Umbrella. Paul Larocque joins me to talk about their brand new 50,000 square foot arts education center on Granville Island. Paul, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me. It is such a pleasure. Thanks for putting a spotlight on Arts Umbrella at this really transformative time in our history. I want to ask you about the significance of this center, but first I want to sneak in a question about your grand opening. It happened very, very recently, and I'm sure when you first started planning this project years ago, you had no idea you'd be opening it in the middle of a pandemic. No, and we feel so lucky. Um, uh, Firstly, you know, this was a major uh, repurposing of the former Emily Carr University of Art and Design building on Granville Island. And so from a construction perspective, um, you know, we were so grateful that the construction industry was deemed essential and that they were able to continue through this pandemic. And while we did have some delays um, due to, you know, uh, reduced crew size, health and safety and shipping with things like lumber, um, you know, we were probably only delayed about five or six months. Um, So um, we just felt so grateful to be able to have such a a bright moment, positive moment in in a uh, in a sector, the arts and culture sector, which has been so, you know, hard hit by this pandemic and to to have a, a really wonderful moment like this together with all of my colleagues. It was a great moment, for sure. Understandably. Are you able to begin using the facility right away? We did, yes. Um, uh, We opened on Saturday, April 10th. And, you know, our COVID health and safety plan that uh, we've had in place for close to a year was um, um, still very much so. And we're in a building now, though, that... um, you know, during the last year, we were able to actually make some adjustments to to our air filtration system, for example, so that we could have something that would be at that highest standard, a system that's called Atmos Air, uh, that keeps our airflow at that highest standard. Um, So that um, was something we were even able to adjust. But to see young people uh, coming into the building and seeing this incredible space, the architecture of this building, which was originally designed by the Patkows, Patkow Architects, back in the early 1990s and repurposed by Richard Henriquez, the founding partner of Henriquez Partners. I mean, it is spectacular. And, and I just tried to imagine what, you know, uh, an eight-year-old, for example, coming into this space for the first time, what they must have been imagining because it is their space now. Unfortunately, we still find ourselves at such an unusual and difficult time, but over the long term, what does this facility mean for the future of Arts Umbrella? It is truly a game changer. Um, We have been uh, an organization that was originally founded here in Vancouver and serving largely Metro Vancouver, but we do have programs through distance learning to uh, Canada's remote uh, Northern communities. But as an organization that has been on Granville Island since day one for more than four decades and for many years to have been so hamstrung by space, we have um, uh, a program that spans uh, many like ages from two to 22, and the disciplines from art and design. And within that, you know, media arts, film, um, all of the applied and traditional arts, dance, theater, film, and music. It's such a broad range and um, programs that are uh, beginner level right through to pre-professional. It was uh, was an expansion that was so greatly needed to, to, to really meet the, the needs and demand of the community. And to have had this opportunity to stay on Granville Island, uh, an incredible 
a hub for arts and culture known across the country and an international tourism attraction, to be able to stay here where we have flourished and we've been part of a community um, is such a, a gift. And uh, to go from a building that was 14,000 net square feet into this state-of-the-art building that is 50,000, almost four times the size um, that has, among other things, a, a 132 seat performance theater that was originally the lecture hall, but we repurposed a, a professional exhibition gallery, a media hub, 10 art and design studios, six dance and four theater uh, and film studios. It's, uh, it's just a remarkable opportunity for us to increase our capacity to serve young people, in, both within this building, but even more importantly, to serve uh, young people throughout Metro Vancouver through like a growing network of um, neighborhood houses, community centers, healthcare facilities, schools, and you know, through a program that is largely donor funded, but uh, it's really the great majority of the young people we serve. Um, it's, it's really um, about the increased capacity. And also for our employees, you know, we have close to 200 on our instructional team alone and more than 250 employees. Um, you know, we're the second largest employer of, of artists in the province. Um, to have this opportunity at this time, like I said, it's a game changer. Absolutely. It certainly sounds like it. Uh, what has it been like delivering arts education and programs over the last year? What have your greatest challenges been? Oh, you know, we've, I will say we've, we've certainly added to our toolbox uh, <laughs> as far as learning. And, and I really um, tip my hat. I've been so inspired by our instructors, those on the front line, working artists and educators who have been so flexible and innovative in really responding to, to this pandemic and really staying true to our mission to inspire young people through arts education. And you know, when you think of um, artists in our community during this time, that kind of creative spirit um, is really, and you know, a reminder, I think, of uh, the important role that artists play um, in the health of our communities. And that kind of innovation is, you know, really um, what it, I think, what it means to be an artist, whether it's in a pandemic or not. And so we've seen, um, like, back in March of, of 2020, you know, we saw. Uh, very quickly that pivot to online within days, you know, uh, and that um, really took a lot of, of, of innovation, a lot of, of, of uh, you know, um, flexibility because, you know, the, these, uh, the arts are not uh, easy to teach online. So much of it is about that experience in person, but young people in particular um, right now, um, the isolation, the, the challenges of learning, um, distant learning through their schools. There have been, there's been so much upheaval and we know the important role that the arts can play in the development of young people. Um, you know, uh, it was so critical. So we saw um, a whole group, just as an example, a whole group of our team you know, uh, looking at the programs that we deliver through neighborhood houses and community centers, put together these amazing uh, creative art kits um, that had, um, you know, sketchbooks in every possible oil pastels, um, you know, colored pencil, um, lots of work to create collage, uh, lots of lesson plans. And we got them in the hundreds out through our network and into the, the homes of young people at a time when they were really looking for an outlet. And it was kind of like this special gift. Um, we saw, you know, with the young people who sing, um, musical theater, choirs, 
um, singing has been one of the, the areas in the arts that have been so hard hit by this pandemic. But we, we're on an island where there are covered uh, outdoor garage uh, areas. And so we have been leasing from Granville Island um, uh, the fourth floor of one of the covered open air parking spaces. And we've kind of transformed it into a space that kind of looks like a con film festival, meet and greet tent, white <laughs> drapes, white carpets. We built our own um, MERV 13 um, fans um, for safety. And in the winter we had uh, heaters, but our young people uh, had been singing with masks, distancing nonetheless, but we have the space and we know that we have that open air. Um, and so while they may be wearing triple sweaters or a, um, you know, a parka, they're still able to express, they're still able to be with their peers. And, you know, these are just a few of the examples uh, and there are so many. It was also really important to, to be able to present. And so um, using film and video to, to tape um, young people doing choreography, um, doing an actual dance performance where through technology, uh, we could capture individual dancers on their front lawns, in their living rooms, performing together, but putting it all together in one choreographic piece and then presenting it again in an outdoor space. These kinds of things are a bit of a lifeline for, for young artists and just young people in general. So I guess more than anything I would say is I've just been so inspired by the role that artists continue to play. But during this last year, I think it's been a reminder to all of us just how critical our, our arts and culture sector is. Absolutely. Once we're through this pandemic, do you think uh, organizations like yours will continue to use Zoom or remote technologies to deliver learning in addition to that critically important in-person piece? There is no doubt that um, our world has changed. Um, and uh, the opportunity we were talking, for example, about um, our opening last week and um, originally, I, when I imagined a grand opening, it would have been a week long series of in person events having our donors, our students, our families, our staff, the Grand Island community, our peers in the arts and culture sector, not to mention the general public. And of course, all of that was impossible. Uh, and so we did uh, an online virtual celebration. And we had, you know, between 1,500 and 2,000 people tuning in, and it still included our students. We had uh, our, our all levels of government represented, our uh, representation from our host First Nations, um, and um, it was an amazing opportunity through video to show our incredible new building. And uh, you know, people from near and far were able to, to participate and to feel safe in doing so. Um, you know, it was um, an eye opener. And, and so when I think about uh, our programs and you know, we've been running this program um, for a couple of years now called Northern Arts Connection. It's uh, in partnership with a, a nationwide program um, titled uh, Connected North. It was sort of started by Cisco uh, and it's really about uh, live um, uh, educational opportunities through distance learning for um, young people in Canada's most remote uh, Northern communities and largely indigenous communities. And, you know, this has been something that has been uh, up until uh, COVID-19, our only real distance learning uh, program. But, you know, um, what we have discovered is that even in, if you just were to look at Metro Vancouver 
and just how, you know, this is a very congested city and trying to get someone from East Vancouver um, here on Granville Island, just as an example, for someone to participate in an after-school program, there are challenges, you know, and to be able, um, especially with certain kinds of programs like we do voiceover programs or animation programs where it's quite natural to, to work together uh, through a, a virtual platform, a digital platform. And so I can see uh, that there are going to be um, just a lot more opportunities for reach beyond all of this. And, and certainly um, our ability to be much more prepared for big curveballs like the one that came our way, which of course everybody had to deal with. But, um, you know, uh, looking at just how in, in the performing and visual uh, arts, the, all of the, 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 the challenges around um, working within a pandemic and, but more importantly, seeing that light at the end of the tunnel and how it's gonna change, it's been amazing. Uh, it's been a real uh, tough, but um, eye-opening, growing experience. On that note, Paul, are there any other lessons or reflections you've taken from the past year that you'll be carrying forward as a leader in the years ahead post-pandemic? Any other things you're thinking about? Well, what I will say is um, mental health. Um, you know, um, I think we all have felt, um, and certainly within Arts Umbrella, um, we have always known, but you know, it's certainly in the last decade in particular, the, the, um, the mental health challenges of young people in today's age, um, you know, how important uh, uh, arts and arts education can be. But during this period when we were in lockdown and staff were being isolated and we were all struggling and how important it is um, to remain engaged and uh, to have programs, not just for young people, but certainly um, our mission is entirely focused on that life-changing impact that the arts and arts education can play in the development of young people. And it goes beyond some of the traditional research that speaks to, you know, problem solving, critical thinking, you know, the, the ability to, to transfer into areas like math and science and to be able to approach those areas, um, those, um, those opportunities through the arts but what we have really learned um, even more recently is just um, things like compassion and empathy are, are a really big part of being engaged in the arts and how important they are now more than ever um, to, to take that into your daily life, to, to think of that older person that may live in your apartment building who um, is struggling and, um, and to find ways to reach out. Um, and so, yeah, I think um, we're just um, at Arts Umbrella, it's about a community and it's a big community, but um, I think we've all just learned how important community really is. And I'm just so grateful to be in this uh, amazing new building that was really um, made possible because of a community of, of donors, um, individuals, corporations, governments, who really um, uh, wanted us to, to realize and to have this moment of growth so that we could continue to, to really make a difference in, in the health of young people growing up in British Columbia. Well so, said. Well, congratulations on this grand opening, and I look forward to seeing everything this amazing new facility is going to be able to offer the community in the years ahead. As soon as restrictions are lifted, <laughs> I hope to have you down for a, a tour. I look forward to that very much. Thank Thanks you. for coming on the Thank show, you, Paul. Haley. Thanks so much.
That's Paul Larocque, President and CEO of Arts Umbrella, and this has been BIV Today. Thanks for listening and watching to our show. We'll be back with a new episode of our show tomorrow.